All right, fitness changed your life. You love it. It's amazing. You want to share it with the world. You want to work as a personal trainer. But is it the right job and career for you? That's what we're going to talk about in today's episode. Should you become a personal trainer? A lot of people have passion. They. That's it. Yeah. That, that is it. This. Is, so, you know, um, I think it's it's important that we talk about what got us into the, the field because we all... We all lasted a long time. I wanted to be trainers. rich. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wrong, <laughs> wrong reason to become. It's trainer. strange you chose this industry. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually didn't think. Um, I didn't think it was. I didn't take it seriously as a career. Not when I, at least not when I first started. I actually thought it would be a cool, um, like side business or like a part time job while I finished my degree. Yeah, but your degree was what kinesiology. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. and so I thought, but I didn't think I was going to use that for personal training. I wanted to be a physical therapist, yeah. or you know, mm -hmm. be a trainer for a professional team. All the I think all the things that I think a lot of people that are moving in the kinesiology uh, direction think they're going to be. Uh, and then when I so when I actually got the job, I really I told the 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 boss at the time. I said. Um, yeah, no, I'm not going to work full time. I, I'll do this part time while I, I go to school. And I was totally grateful for the opportunity. It wasn't until I got into it did I realize, oh, wow, like one, I loved it. Um, found myself working crazy hours and and really passionate about the job. And then also realized, oh, wow, if you are really good at it, you actually can make some decent money doing it. And that's kind of how I fell into it. Yeah, for me, it was, um, I mean, I started working out at the age of 14 and, and became just super um, infatuated with, with strength training and fitness and supplements and nutrition, the whole thing. And I also was had had thought that I would go to school for physical therapy. I think all of us uh, yeah, did. I, I definitely did. Because at the time, you know, you're talking uh, the mid-90s, as a kid, right, as a teenage kid, uh, I didn't know that there were careers – that had to do with fitness aside from like physical therapy. I, I didn't realize there was anything else. So that's what I was going to go to school for. And at the time I had a membership at a gym and, um, I, and I remember asking them like, you know, can I become a personal trainer here? Maybe, maybe I'll get my foot in the door of, of, of training people or working with people. And they said, well, you have to be 18 at the time when I inquired, I think I was 16. So I waited. And as soon as I turned 18, I applied and, it was, I mean, it was like right away, right away. This is what I want to do. This is what I need to do. And um, like you said, Adam, I was there crazy hours. I mean, they could have, they could have not paid me and I still would have been. That was the, to me, I would say like when I, looking back, right. Like think, trying to think back, like, you know, what was going through my head at the time and especially considering like taking the job and not really thinking that I was going to go that direction was I found myself there seven days a week all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even if I didn't have clients and I had a shift, like I was hanging out there and that was like kind of the real like aha moment for myself going like, wait a second. Like I enjoy when in my life have I ever done any job where when I'm not getting paid, I'm not on the clock. I'm still hanging around the place. Like I was like borderline bad, like to a fault, right? Like it was, yeah. I probably every week, that I worked, I probably stayed double the time just hanging out. Yeah. yeah. Hanging out with the trainers, hanging out with members, working out twice a day, playing basketball in the basketball court. I yeah. mean, it was literally, that's how obsessed I was with the gym. So that's the first time I felt like I had a job where it wasn't a job. I just showed up uh, to do, um, you know, to train myself. Then I was obviously like trying to make it work because I came from school and I had all this like education and I was like, what am I going to do? I was kind of in limbo. Meanwhile, it was like, wow, there's actually something here. Like I can build off of this. Like I'm getting clientele. Um, and I started to think about taking it more seriously. Uh, but I was already enjoying just the fact that I was at the gym and I was like able to get my own workouts in. I was able to help people. And really like my favorite part for me, you know, coming from a sports background was the off season and training and, and, uh, the intentional, uh, uh, training that would put into season. And I just loved that period. I was the first one in the gym before everybody else uh, in the off season because I was so excited to grow. Now, was there a, a period of time for either one of you guys or do you remember when you realized like, oh, there's potential for to make decent money doing oh, this? Yeah. Like I remember... I had been there for like, I don't know, like six months or so. And I, and I was doing every month I was doing better, a little bit better, a little bit better. So I like each paycheck I got increased like for six months consistently. And 
And I remember the boss at the time, the, the fitness manager trying to convince me like, you need to do this full time. You should do this full time. Like mm -hmm. you're, you're meant for it. You're meant for it. And I'm like, oh no, I'm going to school. That's what I told my family. That was the whole what, reason why I moved here. Kept telling him no, no, no. And then he started to kind of challenge me. Well, what do you want to do for a living? You know, and I'm like, well, you know, I think I'm gonna be a physical therapist. I might go that route. And he's like telling me, he's like, you know, you can make really good money working here. And I'm like, well, come on, like how good of money can I work? And then he like literally showed me his paycheck. <laughs> That's what happened to me. Yeah. And and so I saw how much he made. He was making like six figures and he's only in his twenties. And he's like, and this is my position. He goes, my boss is making more than that. And then his boss is making more than that. And I was like, oh shit. And at that time too, like that was a lot of money for me. You know, remember this is 20 something years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm coming from seven dollars an hour, and I'm looking at someone's paycheck that was made. I think he was making like ninety eight thousand dollars a year. I was like, "Holy, this is a, was way more money than I thought." And that's like one position up for me. Like that was the moment I realized, like, "Oh man, this maybe this is a career." Here. I remember specifically how it worked for me because I started so ninety seven is when I started there. My first year there, I was a trainer for four months, and then I became the fitness manager. So towards, you know, the back half of the year, I was a, I was a manager and I had got my pay. Remember this is 1997. I'm 18 years old. Now, uh, admittedly, I really had no concept. This is kind of funny to say of what a lot or a little bit of money was because yeah, I, was. I was very sheltered as a kid. I, I, you know, I grew up in a traditional, you know, family. My parents are immigrants. And, um, so I didn't know like what's good money, what's not good money. Um, I just threw everything in, this, in my savings account, but that first year I made $74,000 and I remember the conversation was school was supposed to start up and I was going to go to school to be a physical therapist. And I told my manager, Hey, I'm going to step down because I want to be a, a PT. And he, and he said, uh, do you have your, can you show me your paycheck? I said, sure. So I showed him and he said, um, you're making as much as a physical therapist makes when they like, read right when they now. first start. Yeah. I said, what they do? I had no idea. Yeah. And I went and looked it up and I was like, sure enough, that's what I was doing. And he goes, that's your, he goes, that's your first year. And so he actually uh, went to my house. So this is my friend, Don, Don Cardona, a good friend of mine, first mentor. He came he said, do you mind if I talk to your parents? Because I remember one of the issues was like telling my parents I wasn't going to go to college because yeah, I was yeah. going to try this thing out. Yeah. And uh, he said, do you mind if I come? And I said, sure. So he came to my house for dinner and basically sold my parents on why. And the whole thing was, let me do this for another year. And if it doesn't work out, I'll go back to school. And he showed them his paycheck as a general manager. And he made into the six figures. And so my parents were like, go for it. And if it works out great, if it doesn't work out and that was it, that was the, that was the rest of it. But I, but I had no idea that you could do that working in a gym. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I loved it so much. The thought of working in a clinical setting in a hospital in comparison to working in a gym. Well, that's it. I mean, and that yeah. was what actually deterred me from, cause I had worked uh, as a, uh, like in an internship, I, I worked, um, in a clinical setting and kind of helped people through the rehabilitation process. And it was so slow and tedious and, you know, and methodical. And yes, there's a lot of like cool physiology and like uh, ways to kind of troubleshoot and help people with pain. But, um, you know, I just, it was just so much more energetic and lively yeah. and, and in the gym setting. And it's just like, you just were so excited to go to work. So it was a completely different contrast. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to go back to school, man. I think I'm good here. <laughs> well, when people hire a trainer, uh, they want to show up. Oftentimes with rehab and stuff like that, people treat it like they have to. Yeah. Oh, I mean, their insurance is paying for it right. many, many times. And so they're, they're doing it just because. Yeah. Or I just, I mean, I can't wait till I'm done with this. Then I can get back to my regular yeah. life. Or yeah. when people hire you as a trainer, they want to be there. It's a different um, energy. It's a different attitude. And so comparing the clinical setting to, but by the way, no, you know, I'm not saying anything bad about the clinical setting. I, and I've worked with physical therapists yeah. and people in the clinical setting, and they are, they are the geniuses of the correctional exercise world. And I've learned a lot by working with physical therapists. They're some they of the best is, out there. Yeah, it's amazing. For movement. Uh, but the, I just loved the music in the background of the gym, the clanging yeah. of the weights and just the whole deal um and it was uh i mean it, it, it's it, till this day it's one of the favorite things i've ever done yeah i know i know we've talked about this uh a long time ago on the podcast but it is wild when you think like the way we all came together and how similar our story is to everything from being sheltered around the money to yeah. thinking that we were all going to be PTs to <laughs> like, Oh, I'm just gonna do this thing on a part-time while I go finish my school, never going back to junior. Both you and I were starting junior college, never went back to it. 
And I, I, I made the same exact commitment. I made 68,000 in my first year. And, uh, and that's when they were trying to get me to get promoted and, and become a fitness manager and make even more. And I remember like going like, wow, at that time, I'm only 20 years old. I'm young. Um, and I'm like, okay, one year, if I, if, if everyone's telling me I'm, I'm for this and I love doing it. And I really wrestled with that because in, in, in my family, nobody had their degree yet. And so I was going to be the kid that go, went off and did that first. And I moved away from my hometown at, to, to commit to that. I moved in with my grandmother where I knew nobody in a city. I knew nobody so I could focus just on school. And then here I am six months to a year later going like, hey, I'm going to drop out, which is not my personality to commit to something and then drop out. So I really wrestled with that a lot and also telling my family but then I was like, okay, I'm still young. I have some school already that I've knocked out at junior college. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna give it one year, and in one year, I'm gonna give it everything I got. And if it is what everybody says it is, then it'll reveal itself. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, now I'm 21. I'm still not old. I can go back and, and finish school, and and the rest is kind of history. Like in that in that year's time, um, I continued to fall more in love with it. And, and realized that, wow, I didn't know this field existed that fit my personality so well. Today's giveaway on YouTube is the RGB bundle. If you are interested, want to enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. This episode is brought to you by one of our sponsors, Brain.fm. So check this out. This is music you listen to that's been expertly crafted. They actually design the music to change your brain waves to match brain waves uh like when you are concentrating or when you're trying to fall asleep or meditating this stuff works it really does work uh you put on brain fm and you pick focus let's say and five minutes into it you're focused or you pick sleep or meditation you notice and you can get 30 days for free go try it out for yourself it's legit i was super skeptical i've been using it now for years go to brain.fm forward slash Mind pump. We also, uh, I think there's only three days left for our July special, 72 hours. Okay. Maps split half off and the sexy athlete bundle of programs also half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Well, I got some stats on it. So the personal training industry in the U S is a $12 billion industry. Um, there's over 6 million personal trainers uh, in the United States. And here's the thing about the personal training industry and business. There's, there's times where growth is slower. There's times when growth is faster. But since the 90s, since I started paying attention to the statistics on fitness, personal training has grown every year. It is one segment of the fitness industry that year over year over year over year has continued to grow. Just to give a simple example in my own little bubble the first gym I, I worked in as a personal trainer, and I, I can tell you the gym, it's still there. They just, they moved next door, but it's still there. Club 504, Hillsdale, 24 Fitness. The club's goal for personal training was, I believe, uh, around $17,000 for the month, okay? Uh, fast forward, I don't know, a year or two later, maybe three years later, and that club was producing close to $100,000 a month in personal training in the 2000s. It, to show you the potential and the growth that was there. Now, uh, the market didn't change much, but the fitness industry identified the value of personal trainers and they still see the value. There's a lot of gyms that uh, will downplay to charge a cheap membership type of deal. But when it comes to results, when it comes to why people start in fitness in the first place, they want to get fit and healthy and then stay fit and healthy, the statistics on working with a trainer versus anything else it crushes, it crushes them all. Um, so it is a, a growing industry. It is an industry that continues to grow and present opportunities. Now, don't confuse what I'm saying with it being easy or super lucrative or anything like that, because if you don't fit, you will quit. Training is not going to be something you're going to want to do. It's one of those jobs where uh, if, if it's not for you and you go in there, um, you'll get your ass um, handed to you. And that's why you tend to see this turnover in the industry. Um, like the first thing is, and you hear all of us talk about this. We talked about getting in the gym, how we loved it. We yeah. loved it. We loved being in there. I would have been in there for free. You have to have a deep passion for fitness and health. That sounds obvious, but there's a lot of people, there's a lot of jobs or a lot of careers that people get into that 
aren't necessarily passion driven. Like there's a lot like, like being an accountant, like it's a great job. You make good money, but I bet you most accountants aren't like, Oh my God, this is like a total yeah. passion. Right. Yeah. It's almost like, uh, being an artist. I don't know very many artists who got into it because I thought it'd be a good career. It's more like, no, I have to do this because I love it so much. So having a passion for fitness and health definitely makes uh, the odds that you'll succeed as a trainer much higher. Not having a passion for those will make it very difficult. I mean, I think this is, I think this is across the board. Like, I don't think that this is uh, just fitness. I do believe that. I mean, I was just giving this advice to my cousin who's at this, you know, crossroads in his, in his own career of like, you know, I've done all these things and, you know, I've watched everything that you've done and I just, I want to find something like that. And I said, well, then you got to ask yourself, cause he had all these, like these businesses and things that he's been working on. I said, which one of them do you on a Saturday night when you're not doing anything and you're sitting on the couch, you're by yourself and you pick up your phone or you pick up, which one are you reading about? Yeah. yeah. Which one are you reading about? Or which one do you find yourself? Just cause you're interested about it. Yes. Consuming content and stuff around because you love it anyways. That is like the secret to this. And that, and of course, this is me 40 something years old looking back at 19, 20 year old me. And like, I didn't understand that. I obviously see it clearly now. Like it was so obvious. Like, look how much I was spending in the gym. Like I just be done with a work shift. And then I'd spend an extra two hours with three other trainers yeah. talking <laughs> programming and, and supplements. And like, mm -hmm. it's like, obviously I was very passionate about it. And obviously if I leaned into that, there was a huge career opportunity there. So, and I do think that this, this, this translates across all the boards. Like, and you're right, maybe it's harder to find accountants that are really passionate uh, about their job, but I would still make that argument that, you know, you, if you're going to be really successful at anything, yes. mm -hmm. you probably need to be willing to do that and not get but paid. This is one of those careers. I'll say though, that if you don't have a deep passion, um, you might not survive is my point. Yeah. You might not survive because if you're not passionate about fitness and health, you're just in a loud gym with a, with a bunch of, you know, people coming in complaining about their problems and it's hard to get them results. I don't want to listen to you working in this, this, this hustle, bustle, chaotic environment. Your hours are weird because trainers tend to work in the mornings and in the evenings in the middle of the day is off type of deal. Like if you don't have a passion for fitness, then yeah. this job sucks is my point. My point is it's going to be very well, difficult to continue doing this. Training, you yes. know, yeah. in terms of yeah, dealing with personalities and, and uh, having to be on and having to present yourself in a very energetic kind of uh, helpful fashion. Um, but, you know, again, that, that passion is really what comes through, I think, to the clients that makes you successful as well. Because if you have that passion and you have that attitude, like you're going to help – change this person's life and you're totally. going to help steer them in the right direction. You have the tools and everything to, to really make a difference. Um, that's your backbone. That's going to guide you versus, you know, any other job where you're just trying to kind of watch the clock and manage things as they come. Like you really have to be like on top of it. Well, the other reason why it's so important to be about passion and health, uh, aside from all the points that we're making right now too, is a big part of, of being a successful trainer is also looking and living the brand, right? Like looking and living the part. Like if you don't care and not, if you're not passionate about fitness and health enough to take care of yourself, it's going to be really difficult yes. to do that. With someone. And that I've doesn't had a, mean you need to look ripped. That's right. That's not what I mean by that, yeah. right? You just need to be passionate about health and taking care yeah, of yourself, yeah. right? That doesn't mean you need, like being ripped sometimes, a lot of times can mean you could be obsessed, right? Totally or insecure yes. and like different, like, but being healthy, okay? Being fit and healthy. And practicing it continuously. Yeah. It's something that you, and, and I've seen people try and be successful trainers that don't have that. Mm -hmm. They don't have enough passion about health and fitness to even take care of themselves. And it's always like, man, how do you think you're going to be really great at this profession if you don't even have enough of it to do for yourself? You really think you're going to, to your point, transfer that energy over to a person across from you? Yeah. So step one is passionate about health and fitness. And then to me, step two is passionate about helping others. Yo, oh, you, you listen, you, you, they yeah. have, you have to have both, okay? Because you might be that person that fitness changed your life. You might be that person where you love health and fitness. You love learning about nutrition. You love learning about exercise. You're like, oh my God, I, I could read about this and learn about this all the time. I love working out. This is great. But if you're not passionate about people, forget it because you're working <laughs> with people too. Yeah. You have to also, simul you also at the same time, 
have to be passionate about people because people are not robots that you could plug in a formula with a workout. People have problems. They lose motivation. Some of them talk a lot. Some of them talk very little. They come in with their own problems. They don't want to do what you say. They often don't do. You need to or relate. <laughs> you have to relate with all kinds of different people, people who vote differently from mm -hmm. you, people who pray differently from you. They look different. They, 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 a lot of things are different about them and they're hiring you to help them. If you're not passionate about people, forget it. You're this, this will absolutely suck. But if you have a passion for fitness, health and people, now this job it, is a great time. It, yeah. And it really does require all three of those. And I have lots of examples of trainers that I hired uh, in my early years uh, because they were passionate about fitness. I thought that would make them a good trainer. Yeah. And it was really obvious. And uh, like, I have a few that come to mind right away. And I remember these conversations of saying, I'm like, Johnny, if I could just get you to care about your people, the way you prepare your Tupperware, the way you show up for your workout. Like I had trainers that like were just in the most amazing shape, reading the latest science. And I mean, they were just, but they were, all they cared about was themselves. Yeah, well, they were so, people. They didn't pressure about people. Yes, they were, they were, they were, they were. And I thought, oh man, this could be a great trainer because he's so knowledgeable, so experienced. He yeah. stays fit year round. Like, oh man, he's gonna be great. Right. But no, he wasn't as passionate about helping people. And I would make the case that a person that is, can, can get away with being less passionate about the health and fitness for themselves if they're more passionate about people because so much of the job is people. Oh, mm -hmm. So much of it is being a chameleon. To be able to be with someone who votes different than you, somebody who has different beliefs than you, who you don't agree with on anything, and then you still have to be able to find a way to connect to them. That's a skill to be able to be with that person every day and then they they like it and enjoy it that, and want to learn from that you. That only happens yep. if you really like so let's word let's switch the word passionate with like. Do you like people? Do you really like people because passionate about people does not mean I'm passionate about every about getting everybody fit. That's true. That should be there as well, but that's fitness and health. What I mean is, do I like people so much that I'm curious? I want to hear about this person's day and what they do. And I'm curious on what gets them to tick. What gets this person motivated? Why did that person make that decision? Why is this so challenging? How yeah. can I figure out this problem? Oh, my, I'm really, I can't wait to hear about this person, even though I don't like them. I, you know how many clients I had I didn't yeah. like, but I enjoyed. There's a very the, big the difference. The difficult ones are the ones you learn the most from. Yes. You, you grow know, the most from that's, them. That's yeah. right. That That's such an in, important point. Like, again, of course, we're, we're playing the, the hindsight thing, right? Looking back and telling stories and examples of, of our career. I have a very clear example. If you've been listening to the podcast for a really long time, you've probably heard me tell this story before, but I had a client that was with me for like eight years and uh, she was torturous. We, we, were, we, were, we were on the opposite ends politically, socially, uh, spiritually. I mean, we were just, we couldn't be more opposite. She was mean as fuck. She was just the hardest client to train. <laughs> and I remember the time the girl that I was dating was just like, why do you put up with this abuse? You're the boss. You can take any client you want, yet you choose to show up to this. You have some weird obsession with her. I'm like, no, not at all like that. It's my, it's like my passion for people and wanting to solve every situation and figure it out. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I care so much about this Just person and people. More. Yes. Yeah. I want to like, what is it? I wanted to unlock that in everybody. I believe that, I could connect and I could and I could make a relationship with anybody and I and I took all those on a challenge and and the better I got at that the easier it became and then when I would have one like that it was like a whole new problem for me to solve and I liked that you had to like that and that's that, right. so that's such a, an important point that does that is that something that scares you or makes you go oh I would never want to do that or you're like yeah I'm like that like I actually I like I like trying to solve and figure out people like that, and I'm okay with people having different views and opinions than mine. And I I believe I can connect with all people like that. Like you got to be excited, kind of about you that. do. I, yeah. I mean, I had so many clients. I think I have one I'm thinking about right I now. He, he was a surgeon, <laughs> and he was just an asshole out the gates. He was just a jerk and just very yeah. short with me and kind of talked down to me like I was dumb. Yeah. But you know, I tra ended up training the guy for years and. Within a few months, uh, he opened up and, uh, I mean, he was a brilliant, brilliant man. And I would ask him questions. And I remember there was one moment in particular where we had a conversation um, around, uh, around statins and how they might affect certain nutrients in the body. And I remember I made a comment that, you know, well, you know, you probably want to supplement with something called CoQ10. And he said, what is that? Some like fancy, you know, silly supplement herb that none of them work. I didn't say anything. And I laughed, ha, 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 <laughs> yeah. you know, whatever. And he came back to me the next day and he goes, I looked it up. You're right. Yeah. And then after that, he kind of opened up a little. 
but but it, it was a challenge and I enjoyed it. I didn't take it personal. Like you come and be a jerk. Right, right. And I'm like, my job is to help him yeah. become healthier. And so now, of course, I wouldn't if someone was directly mean to me or really piece of crap. That's just a totally different story. But that he was just not somebody I would hang around with in everyday life. But I enjoyed people so much. I love, love learning from him and working with him and seeing the challenge. And it was incredible. And it's so satisfying to see those, especially those relationships, turn into something else later on when 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 they see the well, value of fitness and what it's doing. You for just them. find those opportunities to present it differently too. Like I can communicate yeah. to this person and break through. You know, like I, you know, listening to you guys, I mean, I've had plenty of examples that I had this lady that like literally had, had diagnosed like Asperger's and she <laughs> came to me like I fired my last five trainers. Like I have not had one successful uh, experience with fitness. And that was how she like That's presented herself to me. You know? <laughs> Let's like, go. I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. Well, I'm your guy, yeah. you know? And then I got excited and then it was scary. Yeah. You know, at the same time as I'm like, Oh my God, this is going to be really challenging. Well, but man, it, she ended up sending me the most referrals out of any other client I've had. Right. Uh, I, that, those are always so rewarding. You know, you, you bring up such a good point too, Justin, about, uh, I was just having this conversation with another trainer who, uh, you know, wants to start a podcast, been a fan of the show for a really long time. And I'm like, you know, probably the biggest misconception about this show is the idea of like, oh, it's just these three guys and they just meshed well and they had this this great timing of the, everything of the podcast. And I agree. I think all that stuff helped and mattered, right? But really what it came down to was the 10 years before in the trenches oh, uh, yeah. and, and having a passion for people and learning stuff because to your point, Justin. Yeah, it's funny because I could tell a story that you guys experienced yeah. almost every time. And yep. and yeah. and just like uh, what you hear on the podcast is we've tried to communicate the same thing a hundred different times to a hundred different types of people mm -hmm. and know that like I can say it this way and this subset of people will receive it and actually apply it and then it'll turn off these subset of people but then i can say it again another way and then these people will receive it and understand it. and like that uh, those reps and and enjoying those reps and the and those challenges of oh this is difficult and trying to figure it out like that exercise that we all did for 10 years before we all got together was so paramount to the success of the conversation on here with like, we ha have our three personalities, but put us at 22 years old. It doesn't work. No. It's because of all those years of doing that stuff like that has added to that com part of the conversation. And you got, that has to excite you that challenge that struggle. People have to fascinate yeah. you. They have to completely yeah. fascinate you and you be excited about just being around in different people, uh, radically different people. Um, it's gotta be something you look forward to because you're going to be doing it all day long. You're going to be working with as a trainer. If you're, if you get busy, let's just say for, you know, you're blessed, something happens, you go to a gym, they're like, Oh, we're going to give you, we're going to give you all your clients. Here you go. Now you're showing up to work and you're working with seven or eight, uh, individuals on a Monday through Friday or five days a week basis, right? Eight people a day. That's full time. You know what that means? No break. No, I can't just fool around, go on social. I'm with somebody Con when you're training somebody, you don't, you can't go on your phone and mess around. You can't look at social media. You can't call your friend. You're with someone the entire time. So if you don't love people and you don't, and you don't love just generally people because you're going to get people who are very different from one another, that will become hell. And this is why the turnover rate can be so high because I think people get into it. They don't have that passion and then it very quickly becomes old and exhausting. But if you have a passion for it, it's like I thirsted for just meeting these people and learning from them and asking them questions and, and, and tackling all those challenges. Um, you know, which brings us to the next point, which is, and this is very important. The both parts of this are very important. You have to care so much that you own people's successes. Uh, you own people's successes. You feel like you own their successes. You also feel like you own their failures. If they win or lose, you're like, Oh gosh, I, I you know, I, we did this together. We did this together. And if they fail, Oh, what did I do wrong? However, this simultaneously has to occur without you taking it personal when they do fail in the sense that you can't get crushed because I've seen trainers either get crushed by when their clients don't follow along, don't do what they say, don't listen to their advice. And I've also seen trainers take it personal to the point where they sit down with their clients and they blast them out. You don't do what I've said. You're not serious. You need to come in here. You need to, 
and then they get rid of the client and they're proud. And I, I, I hate to say that I've done this a few times. It was a huge mistake because I didn't help anybody. So you have to be able to own and feel like you're a part of the successes, but also the failures. But then also like you got to be okay when they fail because here's an unfortunate statistic. As successful as trainers gonna are, happen. you're going to fail more often than you succeed. Oh, yeah. It's That's more, just the bottom It's more line. like baseball. It is. I, this is one of my favorite points you made because it also reminds me of one of my favorite quotes. Um, and that's like, I think that being a good personal trainer, um, one of the attributes of, of being a good personal trainer or coach is being a good leader. And the first rule in leadership is everything is your fault. Yep. And so the, when you wrote that point down, I'm like, that's hundred percent. Like you have, and you have to embody that, that if your client fails, it's my fault. If they, if they didn't show up and they were inconsistent, it's my fault. Like I didn't find a way to motivate this person or I didn't start them at the right place. I didn't meet them where they were currently at. I overcommitted them. Some things so like no matter what, no matter what they say or what happened, it's never their fault. It's if I'm the leader of this group of this mm -hmm. pair, right? The two of us in this in this journey, I'm the leader. It's always my fault, and you have to take that ownership and be okay with that and embrace that. Yes. And again, lean into it, like it. I like that. Yeah. I had that attitude of like, you but know, don't let it break you. Yeah, no, you don't. It's just part of it. Yeah, it's part of the game. We're gonna fail. I know that. Again, it's like baseball. We're gonna we're we're batting three hundred. We're doing really, really good, which is three out of ten people. If I get three out of ten people, the results that, that we sign up for—that's just part of it. That's I'm, I'm doing really well, so I understand that. But then always having that attitude of if, if and when they do fail, what could I have done better right. to have yeah. got them to succeed? It's just data now. It's, it's things that you can improve upon uh, with your next client or the same client that moving forward. Uh, but yeah, taking that ownership—that's a real important piece uh, because you know. Obviously, they're looking at you to kind of steer this. Meanwhile, you have this like vision and, and this expectation that they're going to come through and follow through. But realistically, this is where it hits you in the face. Okay. <laughs> I guess actually what I should be doing is focusing here and kind of scaling back a bit. And now this is the adjustment and this is going to be more successful. Therefore, we're going to implement this plan. So that's how I'm handling that now, as opposed to being like, you're, you're not doing this. It's your fault. Like, I'm not like placing that all on my client. Yeah. Huge misconception, uh, that, you know, that, that new trainers have, or people who get into fitness, uh, as a passion have is that, the way you're going to become successful is by just telling the person what to do. And they've hired me. They're serious. So now if they follow the steps, they're going to be great. I'll tell you right now, uh, I can count on one hand over the 20 years I train people, the clients that ditched did everything I told them. It just doesn't work that way. And I mean, it's stuck, right? It's very rare. Well, Doug you remember was one of them because it was like maybe three or four. Doug yeah. was one of those. Doug was one of the clients <laughs> yeah, that just did it yeah. and he loved it and he did it. And obviously now it works in the fitness industry. But most of the time, most of your clients are going to do a little bit of what you're saying, mostly not. And yeah. you got to work through that yeah. because it's a long game and you still have to own it, but you also still have to be okay with it because otherwise it's going to, again, it's going to suck. Either you're going to get really aggressive with your clients because you're like, Taking this, you're taking the ownership to the point where you're like, oh my God, I can't fail again. And so then you hammer them, which is not a good idea. Or you just don't care about their successes or their, or their failures, in which case, well, you can't do this then. Yeah. You know? Lastly, uh, if you're listening to this and you're hyped and you're like, this <laughs> resonates. I'm ready to rip your heart out. Now. I'm about <laughs> yeah. I, I save some lives. 90% <laughs> of you are right now going to get turned off. Okay. <laughs> which is this. Uh, a big, like most of what you do as a personal trainer, most of what you do is sales. And what I mean by that is your ability to convince people to do things, either hire you, that's sales. That's what everybody initially thought, right? Yes, that is sales, getting people to hire you and, and, and buy your, your, your products and your training. But also I'm getting people to make changes in yeah. their life, fundamental changes. That ladies and gentlemen is sales. And so if you think you're going to get into the fitness industry, become a personal trainer, you're passionate about fitness, you're passionate about people, and then you go work at a gym and your manager says, you got to go sell training, you got to sell this. And you're like, I don't want to do this. It's not a sales job. Sorry. It's a sales job. Personal, the most successful trainers in the world will tell you this, that you have to have very effective communication skills and you need to know that sales is a big part of this. it. It's not a big part. It's all of it. It's so much, so much all sales that even the parts that you're thinking right now aren't sales are sales to the point you just made right there. Like 
even the the program design and the exercise mechanics, mm-hmm. you have to sell your clients on performing the exercises. <laughs> Every and con- single workout, and, and you consistently sell it. <laughs> doing it. You have to sell them on showing up to the appointment. You have to sell them on changing behaviors around their diet. You have to sell them on the idea and behaviors around what they do with exercise, what they do with their relationships. I mean. Everything that you do is sales. And even the things that you think are not sales, the fact that you have to convince another person to do those things makes it sales. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's all that is. And so you have to embrace that or you have to be excited about that if you're going to be successful at it. And that's how I always knew if a trainer was going to be like fail right out the gates is if they just, I just hate sales or I just want to help people. I don't want anything to do with it. It's like, oh, you're going to have a hell of a time then because this whole job is sales. No matter how you draw this up, if you believe that all sales is is effective communication, that is every bit of your job Mm -hmm. is effectively communicating all this information that you've learned over either your experience or what you've read in books or what you've gone to school for. Look, if it was just about helping people and not sales, then a trainer would just be somebody with answers. It it would be a Google. They would show up and, Oh, how do I eat? Right? Here you go. How do I exercise? Here you go. How's the right technique? Here you go. And you'd be a successful trainer. That's not, going to make you a successful trainer. That's not going to make you a successful trainer at all. You have to be able to uh, communicate in in such such effective ways that over time, because it's a long game. I'm going to tell you this right now. The short game is getting you to buy training from me. That's the short sales game. Okay. And there's skills involved with that too. But the long sales game is how do I get Mrs. Johnson who has, is eats a 90% processed food diet, hasn't exercised since she was in eighth grade. Um, how do I get her to do this consistently for the rest of her life and change her diet? I'm going to have to sell her on this and it's going to take me a year of selling her to do some of these things before she adopts them as behaviors, not just for a, a couple weeks or a few months, but forever that's sales. So yeah, this is, if- this is why apps have failed. This is why AI yeah. is failing. Yeah. They have all the answers. They have the the out. Everything's lined up for you perfectly. And guess what? People don't show up. Yeah. They need to be constantly sold that this is the right thing to do, that I have you your best interest in mind, that we're going to take you through this journey together. They need accountability. There was a there was a time when a lot of us predicted what the largest most successful fitness chain in the world was going to go down. And that was when um, Mastroff sold and new leadership came in. And one of the first things they wanted to do was change the sales part of getting a gym membership into like the Home Depot style of checking out where you just Mm -hmm. choose and pick. And so much of what goes into getting a gym membership, showing up to the gym, going to your personal trainer. Like so much of that is is sales and your ability to motivate and co- and communicate to people this new way of living and lifestyle change. And you know when you talk about a new way of leaving, living, you are changing and modifying people's behaviors. That is a, a, a not only is it a sale a sales job, it's a it's a, a tricky one. A mm-hmm. difficult one. It's totally. not it like I think I think going and selling cars would be a million very times straightforward. easier. Very straightforward. Yeah. yeah. Here's a car, here's what it does, here's what the going price is. Features awesome. Yeah. 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 You're getting a we, great deal. Yeah. We have to we have to communicate an idea, a vision, a dream for somebody that they and that they give you money for and you can't present it right back to them. That you have to go, okay, great, you paid me. Now you gotta show up and do more work yeah. if you actually really want that thing that I told you all about that we're gonna go get. Well, like, essentially, that's crazy. Essentially it's you're you're trying to take somebody and transform them into a better, healthier version of themselves, which requires significant uh, behavior changes and is very challenging. And so you got to love sales if you want to be uh, effective uh, as a personal trainer. Look, we have a three-day course, a free three-day training course we did for trainers. I'm going to get the link here in just a second. You can go on there, watch the course. It's totally free. We teach you how to sell personal training. We teach you how to uh, forecast your business. You can go to mindpumptrainercourse.com. So mindpumptrainercourse.com is the three-day training course. It's totally free. Go sign up. We also have an Instagram page for trainers. So we have our podcast that's for a regular audience. We have an Instagram page page specifically for trainers. It's at mind it's at mind pump trainers on Instagram. Go check it out. We also have the webinar that Jason and I are doing next week too. So yeah. that's who yeah. That's, now that's for, show up that for that is for trainers. Uh, if you are a trainer and you want to take 
Now, this is crazy how you can become a seven or eight figure coach. Yeah. Make a career out of which it. Which they exist. And there's only a few people in the industry I would trust to teach that. And Adam uh, here, our co-host here, who's done that. And Jason Phillips, who's another individual who's done that. They're going to be teaching that course. That's at ncimindpump.com. For free. 